Now I'll tell a little bit about uh, x86-64. Um, um, I'm also going to show you how to do the swap example we saw in the previous video, but now with uh, x86-64 instructions as opposed to the 32-bit instructions. Okay? So um, x86-64 has uh, 16 registers. Okay? And just, just like IA32, there's some registers that have um, special use. But there's a lot more general purpose registers, like all of these registers here are only present in the 64-bit version of x86. And also know that while these registers are 64 bits wide, you can also access the lower 32 bits of them um, as a register as well. For example, you know, EAX, which is also present in IA32, is the low order 32 bits of register RAX in x 64 okay? So the way to look, uh, one way to think about it is that we extend existing registers to 64 bits plus adding eight new registers. Um, and now, the way we look at operands uh, in 32 versus 64 bit mode is the following. Remember that uh, we had uh, in, in IA32, we look at move L and L refer to moving four bytes worth of data. Now what we have in x 664 is move Q. It's a new uh, type of data size that is 8 bytes or 64 uh, bits long. Okay? Now we also have other instructions like add L that's present in A32. Now we have add Q and then shift uh, L. We have shift Q and so on. So, uh, and also note that x 664 can also use all the 32-bit instructions that, 30, that generate 32-bit results, okay? So, and um, uh, like I showed in the previous slide, we can use, we can reference the low order 32 bits of some 64-bit registers with the same name as we use in 32-bit uh, ISA, okay? And the, the, high, the high order 32 bits are set to zero. Um, here's the example that we saw in the previous video. Uh, we had this swap function that received two pointers, xp and xy as parameters, and then it swaps the contents of these pointers. Okay? Um, remember that these two instructions here, what they were doing is they were reading the pointers that were stored in the stack because parameters in the IE32, uh, uh, in the IE32 ABI is passed via um, the stack. Okay, so that's, that's one thing to note. And we've used all move L instructions because we're moving four bytes worth of data. Okay? So now let's look at how this function, this piece of code will look like in 64 bits. Okay, but the first thing to note is what? We have move L, four of them. And also note that um, we are passing the parameters via registers, okay, so directly as opposed to, to the stack. So XP, the, the XP parameter is stored in register RDI, and YP is stored in register RSI. And these are 64-bit pointers because addresses in 64, in x 664 are 64-bit uh, long. And look how interesting. Now we have um, only four instructions. We're no longer reading the parameters from the stack, which is a big advantage, right? So it's, it's much faster. You don't have to store it to memory and read it back. And uh, we have much fewer instructions. And now here what we're doing is this first instruction gets the contents of, the, the, um, of XP and stores it in a temporary uh, variable, in this case T0, right? That happens to be mapped to EDX. We get YP. It's contents, right? That's why we're using the parentheses here. We're dereferencing the, the address. Storing it in the other temporary variable, T1, that happens to be maps, mapped to EAX. And then we're just storing the temporary variables back into the pointers, and then we return. It's much simpler, right? And uh, um, because the, one, the, the main reason it's simpler is because we don't have to, to use the stack at all. No stack operations required. And uh, note that we still moved 32 bits worth of data. Why is that? Well, because this integers here happens to be four bytes long. Even though the pointer itself is 64 bits, the unit of data that it points to is a four-byte integer. 
Um, and, uh, and we also used move L still, because we're moving four bytes worth of data. We're still using the same type of instructions. Now, suppose that we had um, long ints. Now, if you're saying long ints here, we say that the unit of data is eight bytes, okay? If the unit of data is eight bytes, now the move operation itself has to be eight bytes long. Remember that Q refers to eight byte words, okay? So, uh, and now since the long int is eight bytes as well, we have to use move Q instructions, okay? So, um, all right, see you next time.